Hi people, thank you for coming to the channel. If you like my content, please do subscribe. So I'm going to get straight into this um, because there's a little bit to read out um, and then I'm going to comment more afterwards. If you're wondering that smoke is incense, I use it occasionally. Uh, what I'm going to be talking about very briefly is something that I have opined on before. Um, it's something I feel strongly about. And just a little bit of context. I do speak from some personal experience. I have signed on in the past and um, I've had mixed experience of, of it, but I have experienced the culture that goes on in the DWP. Uh, I'll comment more about that afterwards because I want to just read this out before uh, you know, I've limited space. So that's the article I'll be reading out. It's from yesterday's I newspaper and the article is by Chloe Chaplin. Benefits claimants face crackdown if they do not seek employment. Now, I may interject at several points here, you know, to comment a little bit. So bear with me. Uh, out of work benefits claimants will be stripped of all support if they do not move into work uh, under a universal credit crackdown. Universal credit claimants will be asked to take part in work placements, requiring them to take a job at the end or risk losing their income under trial plans. Well, that's interesting because that, has already taken place in under the Tory government. And so I don't, I'm not sure why it's saying trial plans. Maybe there's some new aspects of it. Yeah, well, there are in fact, but the aspect of, you know, telling people to take placements and if they refuse, they'll be sanctioned. That's nothing new. Benefit sanctions will be ramped up, meaning that people who do not seek employment will lose all support after six months, including free NHS prescriptions, dental care and help with energy bills. Uh, it's good to see the nasty party is no longer with us. It's thought that such measures would affect tens of thousands of people. That nasty party comment was my words, by the way. Digital tools will also be used to track attendance at job fairs and interviews under the tough and sanctions regime. Very 1984 there. Um, I mean, to me, that is really little different from uh, an offender doing community service getting an ankle tag. We're going to track them, you know. This is all about stigmatizing the unemployed. Um, the plans are part of a minister's, a part, excuse me, part of minister's attempt to cut the welfare welfare bill and get more people into work. Tougher sanctions will come alongside a boost of programs offering mental health support, occupational health, and career guidance to help those with mental or physical health conditions uh, stay in or find work. The irony of that is incredible. So they're offering mental health support, but failing to recognise that this draconian crackdown, this stigmatising of claimants, the threatening letters that will no doubt come with it, that could be contributing to people's mental health problems. And it shows how callous and tone deaf the Tories are on this. I mean, they just don't understand what it's like in the shoes of someone who is signing on. They just don't get it. Um, the government believes the package could help up to 1.1 million people to look for and stay in employment. The Chancellor Jeremy Hunt said that the stricter sanctions would prevent anyone choosing to coast on the hard work of taxpayers from receiving benefits. It comes as the Chancellor considers whether to upgrade benefits in line with September's inflation rate or use a lower metric to save money. In light of the substantial fall in inflation in recent months, ministers are considering whether to pin the uprating figure on uprating on figures from October. But the Institute for Fiscal Studies warned that using the October rather than September inflation rate we cut working age benefits spending by about three billion in 2024-25. That would happen largely by reducing entitlements for the eight million working age households that currently receive means tested or disability benefits. The Department for Work and Pensions said that reforms would mean no claimants should receive 18 months of unemployment and receipt of their full benefits if they have not taken every reasonable step to comply with job centre support. Benefit claimants who continue to refuse to engage with the job centre will face having their claim closed, the government said. That's misleading because, it's, excuse me, already there are sanctions. If a claimant repeatedly refuses to, you know, do what's offered, they will face sanctions. So the government's misleading by saying we're going to introduce this like it's a new thing. The latest published data shows that there were 300,000 people who have been employed for over a year in the three months of July. Job searches track. A new function will be introduced to the Universal Credit Service that will enable a claimant's attendance at interviews to be tracked to give better evidence of job search activities. Big Brother's watching you, basically. People who are deemed to have disengaged will be targeted with those 
solely eligible for the Universal Credit Standard Allowance having their claim closed, the Department for Work and Pensions said. This would end their access to other benefits such as pre prescriptions and legal aid. Um, legal aid. So, you know, no due process if you're unemployed. Ministers will expand support for people with health conditions. This will include boosting the number of people receiving NHS excuse me, NHS talking therapy by 384,000 over the next five years and increasing staffing for schemes to get those with severe mental health illness into paid employment. Yeah, but how are they going to exclude those people from receiving the threatening letters from the DWP? You know, people close to me are in pretty much that situation and they have received threatening letters. So I don't trust Hunt or the Tories or the DWP to get this right. People will be offered uh, tailored support through coaching sessions. Right, first thing, um, yes, there are people, let me just put this caveat out there. I am well aware, for those who say, no, but hold up, Nathan, there are people who abuse the system. I know there are. Okay, I don't deny that there are people who abuse the system. For example, you may have a situation where someone has, this would be an extreme example, but let's say seven children by four different women and they're raking in thousands of benefits and they're not doing anything. Clearly someone like that is abusing the system. Um, you know, there was an infamous case of the Philpots in Derbyshire. Um, 11 years ago, back in 2012, who infamously abused the system, then he went on and killed his children. But that's an extreme example. And the point I'm making is, I would argue that extreme um, cases of people abusing the system are not the norm. I think that what is underestimated here is administrative error. You get a situation, for example, where someone let's say is told they've uh, got a training program at half 11 a.m. And then, you know, before they go to that, they get a call and say, actually, you have a job interview at 11, maybe from the employer themselves. Well, what do they do? Do they not go to the job interview and then not get the job? Or do they, you know, not go to the training session and they get sanctioned for that? People might say, well, just tell the job centre. But there have been cases where they've done precisely that and they still get sanctioned. Because there is an arrogance among some DWP staff, I'm not generalising, but there frankly are people employed by the DWP who look down on the unemployed. They think that they've got a little bit of power, because they do, and they could just sanction people at the drop of a hat. And I do believe that there are people employed by the DWP who get a kick out of that control they have over others, and they have no interest in helping people. You know, they're doing it because it's a job, but they, they get a little kick out of talking down to people, out of sanctioning them. There really are people like that employed in the DWP, so they need better vetting, but that isn't going to happen. You know, it's not this government's priority. Um, but, you know, that administrative problem where there's mix-ups, you know, sometimes, for example, a claimant could be told that they have an interview at a particular time for some training program or something, or for a checkup on what they're doing to find work. And they attend that interview, you know, and during the pandemic it was by phone, um, or in some cases it is by phone because of the distance to the job centre. But regardless, they turn up to that and then there's no response. Or, you know, they're phoning through, there's no answer. And then they're told, you didn't turn up to the interview. And then they're sanctioned or threatened with sanctions. So you get cases where claimants are being punished through absolutely no fault of their own. This is something this callous Tory government doesn't consider. Um, it reminds me a little bit of when Sunak was talking about punishing NHS patients if they don't turn up to GP appointments. But he ignored the fact that, again, there's administrative problems where people do try to inform the GP ahead of time. You know, they try to phone, they can't get through. Or, for that matter, when GPs themselves let people down, you know, where they give an appointment and then it goes over time because maybe another patient may not be their fault, but patients themselves are let down. What we get to is this government, the Tories, they have this obsession about punitive punishments over things. And when I read that, you know, the unemployed will face tracking technology, it makes me think, how is this any different than an offender who has, you know, been a shoplifter or something, getting an ankle tag or more serious crimes indeed? You know, it's basically stigmatizing the unemployed, treating them like criminals. 
and I recall the 2010 general election. The Foreign Secretary, then Prime Minister David Cameron, his government had those disgraceful, shameful, cynical posters, strivers versus scroungers. And of course, they would say, oh, but we're only targeting, you know, those who abuse the system. They knew damn well what they were doing. It was dividing the public. It was dividing those with work with those without and trying to encourage resentment and anger. You know, someone who's working long hours and not getting a great pay, they might think, oh, the unemployed are getting the free money. Except it has never been that way. This is one of the biggest misconceptions about the DWP. People do not get free money. If it was free, there would be no obligations. There would be no responsibilities attached to it. It would just be, there's your money, you know, good luck. But there is obligations, strict obligations. And, you know, if you're late by one minute, they can sanction you. The sanction regime is rigid and severe, and in my opinion, far too frequently used. I think there's DWP staff who use it as an easy way out of um, um, taking responsibility for their own mistakes or just because they can. Not everyone. I'm not saying everyone employed by the DWP is like that. But frankly, if you remember the comedy series League of Gentlemen, the character Pauline, she was this control freak who ran a job centre in, in the middle of Derbyshire. Well, um, yeah, there are people in the DWP. It's an exaggeration. It's a caricature. But they're really, their attitude is really not much better. They look down on the unemployed. They could be openly rude. I've directly experienced this. And, you know, I've never personally been sanctioned. I've been lucky. But there have been people who have been sanctioned for no fault of their own. And, you know, my experience was unpleasant. I hated going into that place because I did feel that advisors would talk down to me. And if you told them, this is what I've done to find work, they would actually question you and say, they, they'd act as if you were lying. I don't think the fact that there are some people who abuse the system is enough of a reason to collectively stigmatise every unemployed person. And the paradox is saying we'll give mental health support whilst ignoring the fact that their, their threatening language, their stigmatizing line which could well be contributing contributing to that is incredible without question without question people have taken their lives over the tories um approach to welfare particularly during so-called big society during those austerity years unquestionably there were suicides because people were threatened and threatened and threatened with by the dwp um and they just felt you know they had no way out because in some cases, you have people who were chronically ill being threatened with those letters. We find that you're fit to work. And yes, there's people who will fake their illnesses, but there's many who have legitimate illnesses and yet they're still threatened. Even people who are literally, literally receiving, um, you know, medicine for chronic conditions. It's, it's a damn disgrace. So... Uh, I'll quickly round this up. When Labour comes to power, they have to show that they're different. And when I, I say when Labour comes to power, all the polls suggest they're going to win. This is something where Starmer has to show he's different. He has to. In other words, Labour has to not use the stigmatising language and not focus on this punitive sanction culture. I'm not saying the system's 100% bad. Some of those things, some of the training programmes might be useful. But it's a sanction culture I think is reprehensible and it's stigmatising people who cannot fight back. It's a David and Goliath situation because if a claimant tries to fight back, they'll just be accused of disrespecting the staff and they'll be sanctioned even more. And I know they deal with difficult people. I've experienced that there are some jobs that go through those doors. Yes, there are, is that faction. But there's also a lot of people who are just on hard times, you know, Unemployed people are as diverse as any other group. And I'm sick and tired of the Tories using this to pitch to the base. Maybe since 2010, the public attitude isn't actually as hard. Maybe because people have been through the cost of living crisis, there's a little bit more empathy. At least one can hope. But I think this is a damn disgrace that the Tories are once again showing the nasty party credentials and focusing on this punitive sanction culture. And, well, we're going to make life harder for the unemployed whilst calling it help. They'll never say that. They'll never say we're punishing the unemployed. But this stigmatising language, this focus on sanctions, that's exactly what it's doing. And even if some people are helped by the training programmes, it's this focus on the sanctions that is a disgrace. And it's one reason I would think very, very carefully before voting Tory.